a larger story with U.S. manufacturing. Uh, yeah. uh, not good news this week. No, it's not good news. And, uh, you know, economists are famously bad at predicting the future. But uh, one of the, the uh, numbers that we got this week was in new orders. And that contracted at a faster pace than it has since uh, October of 2001. You'll recall that that was just after the attack on the World Trade Center and the, and the Pentagon in Washington. So that means that, uh, um, you know, s s somebody is not ordering. And uh, that may be coming in part from Europe, uh, the slowdown in Europe, uh, we, and, and in part from China, which is also seems to be slowing down. Yeah. And I think that was also reflected in the numbers for exports. The exports also declined, according to the ISM. Okay, but we, uh, we now get into the political realm. Obviously, we're four months before an election, and the elections at the presidential level are generally... Uh, a referendum on the president and his job performance that means the economy. Uh, the White House line is basically U.S. problems are being caused by uh, Europe. And as you said, there's, there's a part of that where you see this slowdown around the world, not just Europe, but Asia as well. Um, but is this, uh, is this an excuse? Is this a reasonable explanation to say U.S. manufacturing is suffering? We're at the uh, at the mercy of whatever happens around the world. Well, I think if the Romney camp is smart, they will emphasize some of the vulnerability that the Obama administration has has put the economy in. In other words, you know, okay, Europe goes wrong, but if the rest of the uh, engine is is pumping on all cylinders, then you know you don't feel it so much. But if you're so dependent on orders from China and 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 Europe, and that's your last gasp that's the last thing that can save you and then that goes bad you know of course you're 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 going to get hit hard and he's going to want to blame um, the european problem for his economic problems but for example i can tell you that this administration has been extremely hostile to imports and imports are very important to competitiveness in exporting because you have to be able to access low price components in order to build things add value and send them somewhere else and um, you know the administration administration uh, and the ITC and the Commerce Department have uh, really increased the anti-dumping and countervailing duties, made it very, very tough for producers to access stuff they need in order to be competitive globally. So there's a lot to, um, you know, what goes into a weak manufacturing sector, and you can't just dump it all on Europe. Well, and, and even if uh, Europe is a big drag on the U.S. economy now, this is even more of an argument to say, what can we do to encourage growth here? What can we do to limit regulation, limit taxes? Because uh, we're going to have to pull the wagon. We're not going to get it bailed out, if you will, from our crummy economy by huge uh, demand uh, overseas, uh, but I don't see that. I, it seems more sort of how can we use this as an excuse as opposed to a, <laughs> a reason to pursue a good policy. Yeah, no, that's definitely true. And I think they're also going to heap on top of that that the U.S. dollar has gotten stronger because there's a flight to quality. But again, a strong dollar can be very good for the economy because it allows consumers and producers to be able to buy things. And we're basically getting richer. Get those um, uh, components at uh, low prices <laughs> exactly. you talk about. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks, Mary. Sure.